a bit of the sun in me right now. <laughs> Seasons are changing. Welcome to our Monday Thursday service. Our Monday Thursday service has a few different high points that are different from a normal service. At the beginning is a confessional address. As Monday Thursday is uh, partially recognized as the night in which um, the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, uh, so the confessional address at the beginning of our service is an extended examination of what the Lord's Supper is, what it promises, and an examination of our need for it. So that will be at the, the beginning of the service. Uh, and then at the end of the service, in preparation for Good Friday, it's the tradition to, they call it the stripping of the altar. During the reading of Psalm 22, uh, some of the ladies will be removing all of the pyramids and the ornaments, any symbol of uh, glory or authority, because uh, by Good Friday, our Lord had been stripped of all of his uh, symbols of honor and it was down to a bare minimum, we'll say. And so it's a very powerful thing there too as we, and by the end of the service, we have just a very bare sanctuary. Uh, so our service begins now on page two in our worship folder with the confession, uh, page three of our worship folder uh, with the invocation. Please rise. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. God joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin, and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins again it is as if he said i have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities i give you myself or i give myself into death shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness and to comfort and to establish the new testament which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we, by our words and actions, serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, 
even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. We confess, O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness that I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin, sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. We take this time uh, to greet one another with the peace of the Lord. We resume on page six again with the salutation and call it. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us the remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, and that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take, according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. 
Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lentils of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night and roast it on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hands. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we read Psalm 47 together. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. He did not give up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when no one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it wrong. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, and anything is poured out upon him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me, and raise me up, that I may be taken. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world uh, to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you, what I am doing, you do not understand now. But afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash, except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know of whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now, before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one who sends, who I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table close to Jesus. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then, after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are going to do, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 445. <laughs>
quickly reverses. Once Jesus says, what, you don't want me? No, 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 clean me all the way up over my head and everything. And Peter. And Jesus also institutes the Lord's Supper, showing this great love as a lasting memorial covenant and testament to bring even more than clean feet, to bring the forgiveness of sins into our lives. And it's shadowed, this night is shadowed by the darkness of the betrayal, the darkness of the arrest, and the darkness of the denial, which was not part of our lessons, but we can't miss it. Psalm 41, we've been working through this psalm throughout our season of Lent and working through with this. And tonight we get to verse 10, I believe. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Now we've been saying that the Psalms speak not only of the author, but speak of Christ and also speak of us. We see this here. This speaking uh, of David, we get to see here he is saying, my people that are close to me have turned against me. We think it's mostly about Absalom, his own son, the son who was raised with all of the cushiness of being the son of the king, the son who was raised with every comfort in his father's house, the son who had a temper, held a grudge, murdered his brother, who maybe deserved it, but that's another story, murdered his brother, and then tried to take the throne away from his father. There's Absalom, someone so close to his father and his king, and he has turned against him in betrayal. And maybe we could see this in Judas also. Judas, so close to, Pete, to Jesus, has turned against him in betrayal. But this uh, verse 41, or Psalm 41, verse 10 says, My close friend whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. We wonder that, and of course, not maybe knowing the, the uh, idioms of the day, you wonder what, what does a heel do? Well, the first idea, and it's mentioned in the intro to our bulletin, is that you've been kicked. The raised heel is in a kick. I don't know what kind of kick, a roundhouse, a back kick, forward kick, high kick, I don't know. But that someone close to you has betrayed you even into an attack, has kicked you, has raised his heel against you in such a way to bring an attack against you. Another way this is translated as being, uh, has lifted his heel against me is that the heel is raised when he walks away from you and he has turned his back on you. That either way you look at it, that the one who has been close to you, and even it says here, who eats my bread, has either attacked me or turned away from me. You know, the heel raises when your foot is facing the person you are leaving turned his back on him. Maybe this was Absalom. Maybe this was Adonijah, the other son of David, who tried to take the throne. Maybe it was Ahithophel or Joab, David's counselors and uh, generals who tried to give him counsel, but then turned to join the other side, the sons. With Jesus, we see this very clearly. Even the Psalms saying, and being a prophecy, of Judas, who eats the morsel of bread with me. Judas, who had been included in the twelve. Judas, who got to walk with Jesus, who got to be empowered by Jesus to go out and heal the sick and cast out demons and proclaim the coming kingdom of the Lord. Judas has now gone, gone to the chief priests, and as it's recorded in another gospel, what will you give me if I deliver him Jesus Christ over to you. And they paid him 30 pieces of silver. That was the price of a slave. They bought his life from Judas. And from that time, Judas sought an opportunity to betray him. And we don't know why. We want to know why. Was he mad at Jesus and so he betrayed him? He gave him over because for some reason he thought he could, had to get rid of Jesus? Was he, as some speculate, trying to manipulate Jesus into doing the good thing by putting Jesus up against a wall? It does 
it safe? We are not told why, but we see the result. He goes, he goes and brings the army. And as we know the story in the garden of Gethsemane, he greets Jesus again with a kiss, a betrayer's kiss to tell the soldiers who to arrest. Judas, the betrayer. Judas, the one who had turned against Jesus, raised his heel, as the psalm would say, either in attack or turned his back. But it's at this point that we need to recognize there's someone else in the room, and it's Peter. And at this point, we, we don't have it mentioned here. It says, one of you will betray me, but all of the Gospels, all four of them, will also mention the one who denies him, Peter. Where Jesus says, before this night is over, before the rooster crows, the sun is up, you will deny me three times. No way. I would never do that. And then one, two, three. And we're told in the Gospel of Luke, after the third time, after the rooster crows, and Jesus looked at Peter. And Peter went out and wept. I think of how hurt I feel to look Jesus in the eye and know that he just heard or knew of my own denial or betrayal of him. We would easily go out and join Peter in weeping, knowing that we had failed, knowing that we were weak. And so we know that even as Judas has failed Jesus in deliberate turning against him, and even as Peter has failed Jesus because the flesh was weak, and he would not stand up to the pressure and the fear. We also might be right there with, with Judas and Peter, standing there and knowing then or sometime later, I am denying my Lord. I have What I have done has been a betrayal of my faith. Maybe we know the betrayer as much as we know the one who's been betrayed. David has been betrayed. Jesus has been betrayed. Maybe we know that feeling of what it is to see someone else turn against us and how lonely we feel, how alone and isolated and sad we feel when someone has abandoned us, but never Jesus. But maybe we see also ourselves in the betrayer to <coughs> say, I have failed. I have know my sin, and it's ever before me, as the Psalms would say. And my sins have failed Jesus, have left my God, have forgotten, or turned away in apathy, or turned away in willing disassociation so that the world would not know my faith. Maybe that is us, in private words, faithful, and then in public words, denying or betraying our Lord know to speak with him, to know him. But either way, let's remember that we stand with Judas and Peter at this point. At this point, Judas and Peter and the others, Jesus has served them. Jesus who knew who they were and knew what they were going to do, knew their sins, their betrayal and their denial, he serves them washes them and says that if I wash you, you will be clean. And then he serves them the Lord's Supper. He says, take this. Take this and be forgiven. I will take the sins. And you can receive my forgiveness. And yet he knew the betrayer. And he knew the denier. He knew the sins of the others whom he had washed clean. He knew the sins of the others whom he had filled with his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. He greeted them with love and forgiveness. He greeted them with love and service. He gives them everything they need, even though he knows what they will do. Our, one of our upcoming hymns, hymn 629, What Is This Bread? has very powerful lyrics that get me every time. So I'm not going to sing it. I'll be certain, and then you can sing it. But it says, So who am I that I should live and he should die? My God, my God, why have you not forsaken me? 
And then another verse, is this for me? I am forgiven and set free. Go taste and see, the Lord is good. The Lord knows betrayal. And he may even know our betrayal. And yet he says, come and receive the gift of forgiveness. Come, if you've been hurt by betrayal, come and know the one who will be victorious over every sin. And if you've been betraying, come, turn from that sin and receive the forgiveness of the Lord Christ himself. It is a joyful night that we get to see God's lesson of service and that we get to see his incredible love and that we get to receive the love he has for us and the forgiveness of sins. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. Please rise. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, by your, righteous deliver, by your righteousness, deliver our souls, which are precious in your sight. Embolden our hearts to pray, confident that Christ prays with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, make your saving power known throughout the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord God of Israel, hear our prayers for all those who are sick. Refresh them in their suffering, comfort them with your word, and nourish them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you welcome us to your altar to receive our Lord's Supper, we pray, but count us worthy to receive the forgiveness, life, and salvation that you give. Lord, in your mercy, Gather us, our Lord, around your Son's altar and throne with angels and saints. Bless our fellowship on earth, that at length we come to share this feast in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting, excuse me, for whom we pray, trusting in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue on page 160 with the preface. I'm sorry, we continue in our hymnals on page 160 with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross. That where death arose, their, might, their life also might rise again. And that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Amen. begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. 
with repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
by and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. And you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. 
in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust at my mother's breasts. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far off. Oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him, and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. He has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the, the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, that he has done it.